Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'll take you through some of the questions that I've been asked in my earlier video on the Dell 34 inch ultra wide monitor. Um, here it is. So I've had it for about a week and I uploaded a video about a week ago for this uh, monitor as well, going through some of the things that it comes with and my initial impressions of it. So I've received, received, received a few questions and I thought I will um, actually respond via video as well. So you can actually see how I'm using the monitor and uh, how it might work out for you as well. So the first question I had, uh, uh, someone asked me was around how can this monitor run a 16 by nine uh, input and can you actually run it in the native 16 by nine resolution without having it all stretched out? So right now it's running it in, this is uh, showing in a 21 by nine ratio and you can see I've got two browsers open here. <clears throat> but what if you feed in a 16 by nine input um, our signal and uh, will it uh, adjust everything to back to a 21 by 9 ratio and ultimately stretch it out or will it have those black bars on the side and show you the native resolution so I'm happy to report the, the monitor does come with the ability to auto resize based on the input that it's receiving so I've actually got my <coughs> Chromecast connected here to the secondary HDMI input so the Chromecast outputs in a 16 by 9 ratio which is a good way to test this uh, particular thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the input to HDMI 2, which is where my Chromecast is connected. <clears throat> um, and I've actually got the HDMI input to um, set up the aspect ratio of uh, auto resize. So by default, the monitor. So if I go into the display settings here, so you can see here the aspect ratio. I've got it set at the moment to auto resize. By default, it comes on the 21 by 9 setting. And if you put it on that setting, it will actually resize the whole input to a 21 by 9 input and it will stretch out your, your image, which is something, you know, it doesn't look that great with a stretched out image. So you can force the monitor to just display the actual image, image it is receiving, or you can go back to a 4 by 3 mode if you want as well. But I would say uh, leave it in the auto resize. And then you can have just <clears throat> you'll have the black bars on the on the sides as you do here, but at least you're getting a uh, native image which is not stretched out. So hopefully that will address that particular question. Now the second question I received was around uh, picture in picture and how this monitor deals with that. And I'm happy to report that the picture in picture function works well. And I'm going to actually use the Chromecast again to show you what that feature looks like. So <clears throat> is, uh, I've got my laptop connected to HDMI 1 and the Chromecast connected to HDMI 2. So I'm going to actually going to now go back into the menu and go into the picture in picture settings. And I'm actually going to enable that. And I'm going to just do a uh, go one step down and enable it just as a half half setting. <clears throat> and it will re bring up all the um, there you go. So it brings up the actual two inputs for me. So now on the Left hand side, we've got the, the Chromecast. You can see it's my living room TV. So I've just stolen the Chromecast from my living room TV and connected it to my <clears throat> to the uh, to the monitor. And then I've got my laptop here, as you saw earlier, and we can uh, interact with the laptop here. And as you can see, when I when I move the mouse, I'm not actually able to move it to the to the Chromecast screen because in fact it's a completely different uh, input that's uh, being displayed, so, which is great. Um, you can actually have two different uh, inputs uh, connected to the monitor and there's different settings to actually say okay well how do you want this displayed do you want it displayed uh one as the uh as the taking up the majority of the screen space and the other one just taking up a uh, part of the, the top right as you can see here so we've got the chromecast taking up the majority uh of the real estate and the laptop taking just the top right hand side so there's a few different options and i think it works quite well and there's a few other things you can play around with here as well in terms of audio. You can switch where do you want the audio out to uh, to resolve to <clears throat> and control the contracts and the video swapping as well. So there you go. That's uh, how you can use a picture in picture settings. So uh, yeah, great question there. Um, I probably won't be using it as much. I just have my laptop connected. But uh, if that is something that you want to do, that you do have the ability to make use of it. So I'm going to go back into the to my laptop uh, input. <clears throat> and 
And uh, the other question I've got here is around uh, HDR and how this monitor looks on HDR now. I've actually got my laptop connected to the monitor, as I said, via a HDMI cable. And uh, either my uh, USB-C to HDMI connector is not supporting the HDR or something is happening in the, in the, in the mix of things, but I'm actually not able to pull any uh, HDR from YouTube. So for example, if I run a HDR video here, I don't see any HDR settings at all in the, in the resolutions. But if I were to just um, run, the, run the video on the Retina display on the MacBook Pro, I do in fact get the HDR resolution uh, as an option to me. So it works on their MacBook Pro um, just using the MacBook Pro Retina display. But I do think I need to upgrade the connection from the laptop to this monitor with a display port. And I reckon I'll be able to get a HDR with that. So I'll probably put an order for a new cable for that. And I'll report back what I um, what I get. So that would be pretty cool to be able to have HDR on this monitor as well. Now, do know that the HDR on this monitor is HDR 400, which uh, and 400 refers to the brightness of this monitor. Monitor true HDR I think goes up to a thousand, so you won't be able to see the full effect of HDR on this monitor um, because it just doesn't have the brightness to support that. But you know, I'll take what it, what it comes with and uh, give it a go, and I'm sure it will still look pretty decent as it is. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to also uh, talk about on this monitor is, uh, as I've been using over the last uh, week or so, I've noticed that because this is a high-resolution monitor, some of the fonts uh, do become pretty small compared to the 1080p 27-inch monitor I had before. So I have had to actually resize some of the uh, fonts on this uh, on the different apps. <clears throat> So, for example, on the on Chrome, I've actually uh, customized my font sizes to actually be at uh, 15. So you can see here, and that means that uh, any of the fonts that display on the so if I search for HDR in the tab here, all the fonts here seem a little bit bigger than usual. So if I were to move it back to the, uh, I think the standard one was around 12 so if i move it back to 12 the fonts are a bit too they're okay on the headings here but the uh, the actual text here is a bit too small to read um, so i have um, noticed that i've had to go into the settings of uh, different apps to actually increase the font size so that it's a bit easier for me to see and i have found that actually helps quite a bit with the um, with the usability of the monitor you can see now the uh if i resize when i resize to 15 the the description here becomes a lot larger and a lot easier more legible so that's something i've noticed on the monitor um the other otherwise uh yeah i've had a really good time using the monitor side by side with different apps as you can see here i'm using the mac uh, uh window tiling so uh, basically what i've done there is i've got uh two Brow or two browsers open, Chrome on this side and uh, Safari on this side, and you can actually use the green button here, hold it down, and then say, okay, I want to tile the window to the left of the screen, and then tile this to the right of the screen, and then you can um, move your mouse along and drag the uh, the divider to whatever position you want, and I found that works really well, especially when it comes to things like uh, Teams and uh, Zoom meetings and WebEx meetings, where I can have the the meeting actually on the left hand side here, and whatever I want to present uh, or take notes on on the right hand side here, and it gives me the, you know great uh, great way to have everything on the one one uh, monitor open, so I can see both at the same time and also conduct meetings. So um, a great uh, handy tool there. So yes, uh, that's the uh, that's the second video in the series for this monitor. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. Um, I'll record such other uh, another video like this. Uh, the next one I'll probably record will have um, the results of the Display Port cable. Hopefully, we'll get uh, able to get some HDR from showing up on that, and I'll record the uh, outputs of that for you guys as well. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.